So, I think um, this is from when I was uh, living in uh, Paris in the 1920s. 1928 probably um this is my friend uh who I drank absinthe with it was uh really a she but he dressed like so that's like a fur collar actually I still have it this is um, this is a bed that I wanted to build, um, that was all, this is all like, well, okay, let's just say it's a bunch of doors and ladders. Well, it's like, it's a bunch of doors. So then the, then it has like a tall ladder, like a real ladder. Like, not like a built ladder, but like an actual ladder. So that gives you an idea how big it is. And then that's the bed. So I'm kind of thinking this is like 16 feet tall. Yeah. I mean, it looks like it's in an art gallery. But uh, Tracy Emin already did that piece in her 40s. So I, I'm not really interested in that. It's all that's in, that's just like in a big space. That, that would be really, really nice. I mean, I, I already was there, so it was really, really nice when I slept there, when I slept there. And then this is the dream I had with my ex-husband and his father where I woke up and looked out the rear view mirror and then it was like positioned down so that all I could see were all these llamas. So the llamas covered the surface of the street. So that meant that there were hundreds of llamas that all had died. So as like the school bus that we were in was going over the llamas, it was like you were cracking their skulls. And my ex-husband and um, his dad weren't even like, you know, they were just talking, you know, like it was a road trip. And I was like horrified. I think it was in Africa or something. I tried to understand why that many llamas would um, give their life. Oh, she's so beautiful. This is when she came out of the... This is when she came out of the chateau. And now, actually, this is a a see-through stairwell. Or stair area. But she's carrying two cases of beer. <laughs> so, no, she's gorgeous. I mean, that... That could be Christina. I don't know. It could be Christina. This is a view of the chateau, and that's also the chair. Because we built a chair so that you could just kind of look at the forest. Kind of like that one painter, Julian Schnabel, who has like an upholstery chair. Actually, he said that he had this he had this upholstery chair out on his like grounds and he would just paint out there. Like he would just like cuz he's got to paint so big, you know. So, cuz that's the whole idea. You got to just paint bigger and bigger and bigger. So, then to look at it um Oh, snap. So then to look at it, you had to like look so that's why he had his paintings in the tennis court. So, I mean, this, I mean, obviously this is like a gathering that we're all having. Um, and this is when I, I lived with a group of artists up um, in the mountains. And we had a lot of money.
and um, I don't know I mean it's really sad because that's obviously like someone's penis and she's like having to to suck it but she's like right on the tip but then it's like she's holding on to what looks like a a sink or a toilet she's just it's just like sex with someone you don't care about it's just a way of like sinking into the cesspool of desire yeah. sickening so then this, oh, this is a really good scene because this is when we um, pulled over the the Jeep, which is like, uh, this is my boyfriend, and we're like looking out over the desert, and then we see this party, but this is a lot like, what's that one word, silencio, um, this is a lot like Mulholland Drive, actually, this, I was there at that party, so. And then this is also, um, there's a piano and a couch. This was, this is a room that's covered in red velvet curtains. Music for no one. This is trying to guess how many gumballs are in the machine at Hollywood Grill. But actually it turns to skulls. So the gumballs become skulls. And then at Hollywood Grill, there's like decapitated heads hanging down as I'm trying to meet with my ex-boyfriend to, um, to, well, I mean, I probably was like, you know, I was trying to get him back by like figuring out what to order or trying to figure out how many gumballs were in there. It's probably five in the morning or something. This is actually a scene uh, when I was pregnant with Ariel and um, my ex-husband, we were having an argument at the dock and then the boat was leaving and I can't recall who was at the dock and who was at the boat and that seems like really sort of like super important to understanding what was happening in that dream. But once I got in the water, there were these flotation device obstacles. So, I mean, you're swimming around here. This is a lot like a Matthew Barney logic. So imagine it's like that. And then the objects were sort of blue and peach foam, green, gray. Yeah, you don't ever dream in color, but I... Can, I never, I, I definitely was dreaming in color during my pregnancy dreams, as well as those were like fever dreams. It was like being on acid, like acid dreams, fever dreams, just call, like re amazing dreams during pregnancy. Amazing. Except that this was, um, this. I think this is when I discovered that there were bed bugs underneath my mattress. I had a dream about it. And there were bed bugs, there were bed bugs underneath the mattress, but I told my ex-husband and he didn't believe me. And then we ended up having bed bugs. Oh, wow, she's so beautiful. This might be Christina later on in life, or this might be the cop that my ex-husband had an affair with. I can't remember. I thought the cop, there was a woman with gray hair that he had an affair with, and then there was a cop. And it was really interesting. I don't know. And this is the flayed man. Um, this is the flayed man that, uh, this is a really disturbing image. This was, I also call them the shredded man because these are all shredded. Imagine if you took someone's body and you made these slices so that it was like prosciutto all over. Um, but this man was out on... I, 
I really think this man was a lot like Bob Flanagan's work where he had nailed his penis to a board. And then later I didn't realize, like, so Bob Flanagan was in my dream, but he was dying. But the shredded man, the flayed man looked at me, you know, like crazy Lee Bowery kind of like lips like pulled out, you know. And then all of his skin was like flapping in the wind. And I, I do remember my ex-husband like pulling me aside like, don't look at that. Just don't look at that. And I remember with my dad being in Chicago and seeing this man with huge like pimples filled with pus like really large growths like huge like I've never seen anything it was like Hellraiser like it was really intense and my dad was like don't look don't point and I was like fixated so I don't know the way that the flayed man looked at me I really really felt like it was me talking to myself But, and then the other part of the dream was, like, there was this, like, you know, really handsome guy with, like, brown corduroys and, and, like, um, like, this beautiful, like, cream Irish sweater. I have, like, a real sweater fetish, but I also, like, have a really hard time with sweaters because I start to talk different when I talk about sweaters because there's like a wool sweater in the mouth problem glitch which is probably something traumatic I've, I've tried to figure it out it's sort of happening now but anyway I couldn't I, for a long time I could, my ex-husband couldn't wear wool sweaters around me at the same time in this dream we go over by the rocks and the water and there's this gorgeous man and you know it's my ex-husband because I just loved him he was that gorgeous man so sometimes we'd be like model actor type then it would become my ex-husband but sort of black back and forth you know who was it you know of course it was probably me but you know what he was lying there in the water in these brown no 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 they weren't corduroy they were like brown wool pants and they were like wide leg with cuff and so they were really gorgeous so i think i when i woke up i was like oh my god buddy we got to get you this outfit it's gorgeous Although, God, there was the flayed man, too. So, um, yeah, so then this is, this is my ex-husband, actually.